Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. We are on site in San Mateo, California at the beautiful Hero City. We are now gonna be talking to Tim Draper. Hello. Hello, Thank great, so thanks much. for having me on your show. We're super pumped to host you. I'm jazzed. Tim Draper's background, for those that don't know, Tim is a world-renowned venture capital investor. Founder of Draper Associates, Draper Fisher Jurvetson, DFJ, and Draper University. His venture successes range from Skype to Tesla to Baidu. He's credited with originating viral marketing. He's bullish on Bitcoin taking down fiat currencies and is passionate about entrepreneurs driving their visions through funding, education, media, and government reform. Tim and his family host Meet the Drapers, the first reality show where entrepreneurs pitch their startups, get asked hard questions by judges, and viewers get the opportunity to invest for as little as $10. Find all of Tim's links below, timothydraper.com, draper.vc, dfj.com, draperuniversity.com, meetthedrapers.com, as well as his LinkedIn and Twitter profiles. All right, Tim, let's start things off with one of our favorite questions to ask our guests. What are your thoughts on the direction of our world? You know, this is really a great question because over, over the, the last 50 years, if you just watch the news, you think the sky is falling. You think the world is coming to an end. But over the last 50 years, think of how our world has, what's transpired. Um, people talk about all the murders and murder rate is so far down. If, if people talk about, um, oh, we're, you know, we're not moving progress along or whatever. The difference between how we live now and how we lived 50 years ago is extraordinary. I mean, a lot of people didn't have, still don't, but still running water, electricity. Since then, things like the computer, the, uh, the smartphone, Uber, <laughs> you know, some extraordinary things have happened. We've been able to communicate across, around the world. So if you ask me what I think is going to be happening moving forward, I think we're going, to, we're going to have an acceleration of progress. Amazing change is going to happen. And I think we're going to see the decentralization of everything, of the world. Uh, I think the world's going to go from tribal. We were all tribal because we were sort of protecting our things in our space. And now we're going to go global because the, the, the tribes don't matter anymore. The, Geographic borders matter much less than they ever did before. And over time, I think governments are gonna to have to compete across border the way Estonia has already started to do. So this is gonna be a really interesting time. I think we're gonna go through this amazing, uh, there's gonna be an amazing leap forward for humanity. It's gonna go from this, this world where we really cared about what the borders were and what our government said to where we're starting to start thinking about how are we going to uh, approach humanity and how, how are all of us going to be doing flying through the world on this beautiful pearl we live on. Okay, so throughout the last 50 years, yes, we've had such an increase in the quality of life. There's been billions of more people added to the planet. Exponential technology is and geopolitics are a little can seem a little hectic at times and some sometimes things like synthetic biology can do things like grow meat in bioreactors and that's fantastic also can be used as for bio warfare so and with all the other like you said also there's this decentralization that's occurring from the from the turning the triangle to a circle the me to the we all these types of things how, it, how are those, the exponential technologies, the geopolitics, plus a lot of the issues with their disconnection from the planetary spirit, how are those coming together and playing out for you? So you mentioned the population. The population over the last 50 years has gone from three to eight billion. And the next 50 years, it's expected to go from eight to 12 billion. Most of that growth is gonna be in the African continent. Um, that's gonna show, we're gonna have a, a real boom in Africa because there's gonna be a much younger population there and that's gonna be great. We're Media, once, median age of about 18 right now. Yeah, and, and uh, really booming. And Nigeria will be the biggest of all of those. Um, and so, 
And, and I think that that world will rise. And so we're gonna start, and some of the other um, lesser developed countries are also gonna rise around the globe. And I think we're, we're not gonna feel so different going across borders. And I th so I think that's gonna be really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you, you mentioned a new technology that, um, that can do all this great stuff, like you can, you can replicate meat without killing an animal, and you can, but you can also use it for bio warfare. That's always been our choice. Whenever there's a new technology, that technology first tends to win all the wars, but it also tends to move society forward in a, a magic and imaginative ways. Uh, and I think that's always going to be the case. There will always be the, the, the group that says, hey, how can I use this for power? And then how can I use this to improve humanity? That'll be the other group. And the ones I think that are, that are clinging to power right now are, um, I think are sort of a dying breed. I actually think that um, humanity is winning out. And it's, it has to do with social media, um, it, with all the communications vehicles we have now, I, I kind of had the sense that when we had free communication mm -hmm. around the world, when we did Hotmail and I came up mm -hmm. with the viral marketing mm -hmm. idea, well, um, that was going to really open the world up and it really has. So that we're all very, very interconnected and interrelated uh, through just friendships, but also through businesses and through uh, walks of life, different ways of operating. Um, and so that's when, when you see one country threatening another, you think, wait a second, that's just that guy, that leader, so-called leader, um, being mad at that other leader. Because down on the, at, the, at the human level, we already have great friends in those countries. I mean, I think of all this friction between the US and China. That's friction between the two leaders of those countries. It's not friction between us. Yeah. We, have, we have amazing relationships with all those people in China. I've been working in China mm -hmm. for 50 mm -hmm. years, 30, 40 years now, mm -hmm. and, uh, and had built some amazing relationships. And now I look at any kind of a war or whatever that kind of uh, the, the danger zone as the equivalent of just, you know, shooting off your own leg in order to, you know, see if you can hobble a little faster with your remaining leg. It, it really doesn't make sense, except to those leaders who are trying to cling to power. That's, that's going to be the threat. That's going to be, we are moving to a new level. Yes. Society is moving to a new way of thinking. Um, the leaders have to catch up. And it's interesting, um, the leaders of these smaller countries are going, yeah, how do I do this? How do I use Bitcoin? What do I do with, you know, how do I get more venture capital here? How do I get more citizens to come to my, my country? Um, and, they're, and they're also saying things like, wait, how did Estonia do the virtual citizenship thing? How do I do that? How, uh, Malaysia already has a virtual residency program and mm -hmm. Kazakhstan's working on a virtual citizenship program. So there are lots of countries that are all kind of going, huh, this is interesting. Making sure people can't just disappear off of the face of the planet for their land or for their money, all different types of things in a decentralized way. You are, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really, uh, I, I love hearing about the, you've been here for doing venture capital here 35 years. Um, the relationship with China, like you said as well, just to being able to see the internet and the exponential technology age really flourish thanks to a lot of the tech in Silicon Valley here. And then seeing the prom some of the promises of the internet when everyone is connected, when there is a true decentralized way of communication, uh, can then we identify the signal that is being pushed up? And can we then, like you said, the power structures that are trying to hold on to greed or um, corruption, but rather have those die out, find the signal, have those die out over time. That mentality and view seems to be the one that is we're aiming to really all transition to. And I'm curious on a 
on a, on a spiritual connection to earth, uh, how do you see that maturity for us? Are we really connected to the essence of how we all evolved here together? Well, it's pretty interesting because if the, the media, the press, at least the popular press, is, um, is trying to hold us back, going back the other way. I mean, they were, they're very good at saying what's happening today, but the idea that we're moving towards something is not a part of our mainstream media. Uh, they're much more cons they're much more happier to report on a, a military threat somewhere or a, or a friction between two countries. They love they love reporting on that fear. They're fear, actually fear. Yeah, it's a they self fear is what really is going on. Well, it turns out that countries. Um, are, are not putting up with that as much anymore. So countries are sort of saying, well, look, we got a bad dictator. We got, we got Facebook, we got Twitter, we got email. We can, uh, we can spread the word and have the overthrow of a bad government. And that kind of thing is going to start happening. Or we can spread the word, get out of this country and leave that guy to to fall under his own weight. Uh, I think we've got, it, it is gonna be a really interesting time. We're, go, we're about to go through something that is more interesting than the internet, more interesting than I think anything that's happened since we were first tribal. All of a sudden we've got this new thing. Humanity's gonna go through this new change and it may not change again for 20,000 years. Inclusive fitness. Yeah, this open, open, transparent world that, uh, that all kind of figures out how to operate. Uh, and I think that, uh, that that figuring out is gonna be a really interesting opportunity and you're gonna see a number of different breakthroughs. And a lot of it does come from new technologies. New technologies open the open people's eyes to new ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, the, who who ever imagined that people in the city would would try to operate without an automobile? Simultaneously, well, now it's simu like simultaneously, boom, Uber, it, boom, yes, DoorDash. yes, and simultaneously, it's also doing the. Uh, a, a, the, a, the addiction process to the variable reward system that are the news feeds rather than the connection to the trees, the plants, the animals, the sun, the, the, the thing that gives us life here. So there's simultaneously technology causing a disconnection from source, from spirit, while it also causes us to be able to talk to each other across the world. And, yeah, I, and, yeah, I don't know what it is in humans that want that fear in their head um, we're less fearful now, basically. There's less to worry about, really. I mean, less life-threatening things to look, worry about. And so they're looking for those because that's the way we were made. It was like fight or flight and run and mm. whatever. And that fear thing is a little bit of like, a, it, it lights up the brain. It's like, whoa, hey, I'm afraid. Let me go figure something out. Mm. Well, now that figure something out is just, um, you know, you don't, you can figure stuff out in your business or your life or whatever, um, your love life, a lot of ways to figure things out. But if, if you've already kind of got all those things kind of figured out, you, um, you rely on the news to give you that fear thing that sends off the endorphin that, that drives it. And it, yes, it does take a lot of the soul out of society. And, uh, and people really do need to detox away from the news. And parse for signal with greater and, vigilance, and, and critical get, thinking. Get connected with uh, the world around them, the yes. people around them, yes. connecting with people. Yes. I've seen a lot less connections with people um, eye recently eye. because of that. And I've seen a lot, um, less connection with nature and the, the animals and the plants of the world, uh, you see a lot less of that. And that's why we all of a sudden there's all this, this 
attachment to dogs or to their cats. Yeah, um, oh, and their people, kids, people nuclear feel family rather than that global village vibe, which we're in many ways we're heading to. Tim, um, a couple, couple more, let's do some rapid fire stuff. And then if we can, we may um, come back and do another round with you. On rapid fire stuff, 35 years, venture capital, Silicon Valley, give us a profound takeaway from what this experience has been like. Well, technically 33 years. 33, but, but, it says 34, but right? The ride, <laughs> well, maybe it's 34 now. Yeah, yeah, okay, approaching okay so we're getting there. So um, <laughs> you'll ask me again and I'll say, wait, was that 33 or 34? <laughs> As you get older, you miss those years. Um, so here's, here's the way it looked. Way back when, it was uh, very much a gentleman's club, and they all kind of got together, and they saw an entrepreneur, and they said, I'll throw a little money in, I'll throw a little money in, and, and why don't we just say we'll split it with the entrepreneur, 50-50. Well, that, um, that did very well, and, uh, and so more money went in. More people watched, more people realized that, hey, I can do that too. And so it has spread and venture capital and entrepreneurship has spread to where now, um, rather than me going door to door and knocking, or knocking on any door that said something software, now I am uh, barraged. We have something like 20,000 business plans that come to my email address every year. A year, yeah, wow. And, uh, wow. and so, we're, and I, do, I get to fund about 20 or 30 of them. Um, but you can also s distribute the ones that you think to your so, network. Yeah, so, yeah. but there are lots of other venture capitalists. There are lots of ways to do venture capital. Mm -hmm. um, there was the possibility that ICOs would replace venture capital. Um, crypto, Bitcoin have really kind of changed things. Eventually, I believe that, that I'll be able to raise a fund in Bitcoin uh, put it out in Bitcoin, have the entrepreneurs pay their employees and suppliers in Bitcoin, and then have the whole thing build into a smart contract so that my investors get exactly what they're due at the exact time they're due yes. it. Yes, it's great. Uh, and, and it could end up being a really uh, great experience. And, and inclusive stakeholding and, to and the, some gives, of the consumers, it, all this type yeah, of stuff. Yeah, it gives lawyers and accountants more they can give you more abstract advice rather than the boring stuff that they that they have to spend ninety percent of their time doing. Kind of brings brings up AI. Um, I, one way to look at the world is everything is going to be replaced by AI. So just think about what your what part of your job is mundane yes. that will be replaced by AI, and then think how will you respond? How do you do better uh, with this new world? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's kind of fun to think about. I, I, I could, there are a lot of things that I do repetitively and uh, I would be happy to do those by AI so that I, I were, was freed up to do other things. To your creative flow states. Um, okay, Tim, let's talk about what the transition has been with civilization over the last thousands of years. We had money come into play. And now with the internet and the decentralization of, of things and the speed at which we can just do something like communicate and then exchange value with digital currency that's on a decentralized ledger rather than a centralized currency. This is a massive moment with being able to exchange value. This is why you are, I think, so bullish on cryptocurrencies. And so I want you to, to just give us that, that, that core essence of like internet, exponential technology, digitization of currency. Why is it so profound? So um, he, most currencies uh, were started just because people trusted them. It, it was like the promise of gold or started out being shells and you know, then it was gold and then it was the promise of gold and then it was a promise that the government would back you up, which is a little less of a promise. Well, and that was a given government, and that government was tied to a geographic territory. All of a sudden, we have a currency that is not tied to a government and not tied to a geographic territory. Well, that frees us because governments have always uh, used that currency to control us to, in some ways, keep uh, keep controls over that currency. Well, this frees us. 
We can, we can operate across border much easily. We can move money across border much easily, much more easily. And, um, and we reduce the friction significantly. You know, you know, you wonder why are those banks so big and those bankers all so rich? Why are they all dressed so well? Well, it's because two and a half to four percent of every transaction you ever do is picked up by the uh, credit card company and the bank gets the bulk of that. Um, that would go away. And so you do see the, the banks feeling threatened here and for good reason because if you use Bitcoin instead of dollars, you, the banker doesn't control your Bitcoin. He controls your dollars. So I think you have this new opportunity for a currency that is, is frictionless, not no two and a half to four percent, transparent. Uh, everybody can see exactly where it goes. So you keep perfect records. Uh, it is uh, open, it's cross-border, so you can use it anywhere. You can go from one country to another, pull down your Bitcoin and everything's fine. Uh, and, and it's a great store of value, but it's also going to be faster than the Visa network. So this is going to be one of those things where it's like, it's a sea change. There is new technology and it is better, faster, cheaper than anything else out there. We're going to move that way. And governments have to figure out how they're going to adapt to not controlling everybody through the currency. Beautifully synthesized. Then also the underlying technology of blockchain. You were giving some examples earlier about being able to um, have people be identified, um, also to um, have smart contracts. You you gave a couple examples of that as well. Um, uh, uh, some other um, rapid fire things on the way out. Um, what are your thoughts about what happens pre-birth and post-death? Oh, that's fun. Pre-birth, I haven't spent a lot of time on pre-birth, but I know post-death, we're still connected. So that is a really, I just know we are. Because I, um, and I didn't, I wasn't 100% sure until my mom died. And she, she left us with this giant rainbow, spectacular rainbow that came from nowhere. And, and all of a sudden there was this spectacular rainbow. And I thought, because we were all sort of flipping out, we had just lost our mother. And uh, just by going outside, all of a sudden we saw this spectacular rainbow. And we've seen, there have been other sort of interesting signs. I won't go into all of them. There is more. And I think that, after, that at first they, they want to make sure, like when people die, they want to make sure that everything uh, goes according to their plan. And after that, I think they have another adventure. And so that mm -hmm. over time they, they move on to their other adventure. Okay. So I think there is more. Um, and I don't know whether the two things are linked, whether you, you know, if you do well here, you do well there. Um, but I do know that we're connected. Mm -hmm. I also believe that we're interconnected with yes. each other throughout the world. How many times have you thought of somebody and then seen them at the grocery store about an hour later? Uh, that kind of thing, we are all interconnected. So there are all of these, there may be neurons firing in here and there may be, um, by the way, your gut actually, actually does have a brain to it. <laughs> and uh, so your brain and your gut uh, not only are in this body, but they are also connected with all these other bodies. We are interconnected. We're, we're actually connected with the plants and animals too. Totes. And I think those connections are not uh, as easy, not as strong, but they are there. And, uh, and then the before birth. Could be that adventure you were talking about, the next adventure. They could be in a previous adventure. Uh huh previous adventure to this next? I mean, what's interesting is, I don't know if other people have felt this, but I have felt that I would get um, some new piece of, of educational material and I'll look at it and I'll go, I already know this. And I know it's new to my life, but I already know it. Mm. I'm not sure why that is or how that happened, but I already know it. 
So I think that there are things that, um, that connect from previous life to now and from now to future life. And so I'm, you know, after my mom died, all of a sudden I realized, hey, it's mm -hmm. okay. It, it's okay. We're, this is just a part of a longer, much more extraordinary adventure. And story of yeah. civilization. And then there's something I always like to sort of throw out to my students and mm -hmm. other people. Look up at the stars and realize that you're just on this little marble flying through space. Um, pearl, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, Look up at the stars and then, and then think how amazing, how many stars there are and all that. Think of, is there an end to that? And then you think, wait, if there's an end, what are you boxed in? How does that work? Or is there no end to that? And both are equally <laughs> freaky to think about. <laughs> I love Draper University. I love what you do with the like the the youth there. They're so, from around the world. They're coming together, and you're helping them with entrepreneurship, telling them these stories. Um, Tim, how about are we in a simulation? No, <laughs> I I don't think so. I think there are too many fun, interesting things where you can you can control them and make interesting new things happen. You can go mold your future. You can mold your, the service you're gonna to provide to people. You can, uh, you can do so many things with your life. Uh, you know, I'm, maybe there is some watcher, I'm not sure. And the last one is, what's the most beautiful thing in the world? Love. Love. Love is all you need. <laughs> I love it, Tim. Thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. We're very pleasure. grateful. We would love for everyone to check out Tim's links in the bio below. Give us your thoughts in the comments. We would love to hear from you. Also, go and talk to more people around the world, your friends, your family, your coworkers, people online on social media about the topics that we discussed in this episode and the power that they actually have for our future and support arch artists, entrepreneurs, people in your communities that you believe in support simulation. Our links are below and go and build the future. Everyone manifest your dreams into the world. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you soon. Peace.